we're going to continue our factoring conversation, this time with a little more different method called the x squared plus bx plus c method. And in this, we need to note that a will not equal to 1. All right. And to handle this, we're going to use something I call the x method. In the x method, you create this x. And in this top portion here, you put the number that you would get when multiplying a and c. So we're factoring 3x squared plus 11x plus 6. And the a value is 3. The c value is 6. ac is 18. Then in this bottom portion, we're going to put the number that we're trying to get to, in other words, the b value, which is what we're looking to add or subtract to, and that in this case is 11. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for a number that multiplies to 18 and adds to 11. So we're kind of turning this into a 1x squared plus bx plus c problem. In this case, it's 2 and 9. And so what I do is I rewrite my original equation into four terms. So from there, we're going to take and use a grouping factoring to get this done. So I say 3x squared plus 9x plus 2x. Those are my two terms that add to my middle term plus 6. Now we notice there's four terms I can group. And I notice I've got a GCF of 3x in this first set of two and a GCF of 2 in the second set of 2, GCF overall of x plus 3, and then this is my final factoring. You can FOIL this out and you will get that back. So we'll use that for any type of factoring where I have an ax squared plus bx plus c where a is not equal 1. So let's practice here. need to make my x, and I need an a times c value here. That's going to be 70 and negative 17 here. I need two numbers that multiply to 70 of the positive nature and add or subtract to negative 17. 7 and 10 will get that done. And they both have to be negative. So I rewrite my original quadratic into 5x squared put my two middle terms in, which are negative 7x and negative 10x, and then write my 14. Now, again, I'm going to look, since I have four terms, for a grouping. In these two, I notice no numbers in common, but I have an x in common, leaving me 5x minus 7. In the next two, I'll pull out a negative, and there's a 2 in common here leaving me with 5x minus 7. Notice again, there's a GCF. Pull out the GCF of 5x minus 7, and I'm left with x minus 2, and that is the factoring. Here's another one. Create my x. A and C gives me negative 72. B value is going to get to negative 6. So again, I need to know my multiplication facts. 6 and 12 give me 72, but I need a negative 6, so that 12 has got to be negative. Rewrite 8x squared plus 6x minus 12x minus 9. Four terms. Take these two, 2x two in common leaving me with a 4x plus 3. Pull out a negative. There's a 3 in common here, leaving me with a 4x plus 3. Again, notice GCF of 4x plus 3, and leaving me with a 2x minus 3. And that's the factoring. And again, you'll notice that Positive 3 and negative 3 do multiply to negative 9, but they don't add to negative 6, which is why you have to FOIL to check. So that's the ax squared plus bx plus c. Now this is also set up for an ax squared plus bx plus c, and we could certainly use that. But we're going to talk about something called perfect square factoring. And perfect square factoring involves taking a look at the a term 
and the C term and seeing if those are perfect squares. Now again, I can use the X method to do this, but in this case, since I have perfect squares, I'm going to spend a matter of seconds just to see if this works. The square root of 25 is 5. So if I multiply 5x times 5x, I get 25. The square root of 9 is 3. I'll put this down. Now I need a positive 9 but a negative 30, so I'm going to put two negatives here. Now notice what happens. I'm claiming this is going to be my factoring, which literally took seconds. All right, no x method, not a lot of thought, just what's the square root of what. I foil this out. There's 25x squared minus 15x minus 15x plus 9, which is 25x squared minus 30x plus 9, and that saved a whole lot of time. But you can only do that if the a and the c term are perfect squares. Here's another one. There's a perfect square, there's a perfect square. I'm going to go 7w, 7w, 6, and 6. Get 49w squared plus 42w plus 42w plus 36. And these two get me 84w, and it checks. Will this always work? No, but I'd say probably you know most of the publishers when they put something like this I'd say 85 percent of the problems will use perfect squares to factor it will be the exception when you have to use an X method now you'll notice not three terms but two terms but we notice the a term and the C term are still perfect squares I'm gonna go 7 X 7 X now I need a negative 25 when I multiply so that's 5 and 5 square roots positive and negative and you'll notice there's my 49x squared, negative 35x, positive 35x goes to 0x, minus 25, it checks. Again, another one, except this time I have two variables, which is no big deal because they're both perfect squares in this case. Again, I'll go 4y, 4y, 9y, 4, 9, 9, 9, positive negative again 16 y squared negative 36 y w positive 36 y w that term goes and you have a minus 81 w squared so now we're going to combine all the factorings we've done and something called complete factoring which is a little more difficult because it could involve one two possibly even three different methods of factoring within one problem Take them in the following order, and if you can do that and pick up on each different method at the time appropriate, I don't think you're going to miss these things. So the first thing you're going to want to do is look for GCF factoring. Second, if there's four terms, obviously go to grouping. Third, if the A does not equal 1 and it's a quadratic, look for perfect squares. It saves a lot of time. If A is not equal to 1, use the X method if there's no perfect squares and then finally if A is equal to 1 and it's a quadratic do the guess and check or what multiplies to C and adds to B. Let's do a few of these. So let's go ahead and practice one now. Firstly I see that I have a 3 in common and an X in common. So I'll factor that out as a GCF leaving me with an X cubed, a 2X squared, and X and a 2. Then I see I've got four terms left inside here so what I'm going to do is go and group those. In these first two I see there's an x squared in common leaving me with an x plus 2. Pull out the negative then I have an x plus 2. Note GCF again so I'll pull out the x plus 2 and I'm left with an x squared minus 1. Now you'll notice in this last term those are perfect squares so this goes to 3x x plus 2 and then x plus 1 x minus 1. So there's a lot going on in that problem. Not as many things going on but we'll see how difficult it gets. 
I know there's an A in common and a 15 in common, so I'll pull that out. 15 and A, leaving me with an A to the fourth, minus 4B to the fourth. Now you'll notice that's a perfect square and that's a perfect square. So I've got 15 A times A squared minus 2B squared and a squared plus 2b squared. No perfect squares left because the twos are not perfect squares, so you're done. In this problem, looks like there's going to be a 3 in common and an a in common, so I'll factor out a 3a. It's going to leave me with 3a squared plus 22 a minus 16 like so. Notice I've got a perfect square here but not a perfect square here. This looks like I've got an X method. So I need the AC term here and the B term here. AC is going to be negative 48. B is going to be 22. So I'm going to go 24 and 2 with the 24 being negative. I've got 3A 3a squared, my middle terms are negative 24a, and 2a minus 16. Four terms tell me that I've got to go ahead and group, so I pull out a 3a. I'm left with an a minus 8, and then I pull out a 2, and I have an a minus 8. There's a GCF of the a minus 8, giving me a 3a pull out the a minus 8, left with a 3a plus 2. Again, there's a bit to do on these problems, but if you take them step by step, not going to be impossible. Only two terms here, but you'll notice they're both perfect squares, and you may not notice them as perfect squares, but what multiplied by itself is x to the fourth. That's x squared and x squared. And what multiplied by itself is w to the 12th, that's w to the 6th, and w to the 6th. One positive, one negative. Now you'll notice that I also have perfect squares in this case. When I pull out my perfect squares, the problem is this term right here is prime. Because if you were to say that's x and w cubed is my perfect squares, there is nothing that you can do to get rid of the middle term. Whereas on this, you'll note that if I say I've got an x and a w cubed, and an x and a w cubed, well, that's no different than what I just explained. Why does this work? Because I need a negative w to the sixth. And when I have a positive and a negative, my x w cubed term adds and subtracts out, so it's gone. And then that is my final solution. So in this case, I've got a negative 2x squared. I never want to factor with negative leading coefficients. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all this over to this side, giving me a 0 and a 2x squared and a negative 9x and a negative 18. So this is definitely an x method. Since we're solving in this case, I'm going to look for a zero product principle, which is y set aside equal to zero. I have my ac term equaling a negative 36 and my b term equaling a negative 9. Two things that multiply to 36 add to 9 is 3 and 12. 12 has got to be negative. So now I've got 0 and 2x squared plus 3x minus 12x minus 18. Go ahead and group that. So that's an x and a 2x plus 3. And I pull out a negative 6. And I have a 2x plus 3. 2x plus 3 is a GCF, 
x minus 6 is what's left. Zero product principle. 2x plus 3 equals 0. And x minus 6 equals 0. So negative 3 halves equal x. And x equals 6. Next you'll notice I've got terms that are in common here. I've got a 2 in common. Side is set equal to 0, so I'm still looking for a zero product principle. But if I pull out the 2, I've got 25x squared plus 10x plus 1. Now you'll notice I could use the x method, but I have a perfect square in the 25 and a perfect square in a 1. So I'm just going to try it and see if this works. 5x plus 1 and 5x plus 1. Note, 25x squared, 5x and 5x is 10x, and 1. So in this case, I've got three things multiplying to equal 0. I can do this a couple of different ways. Um, I think the way that confuses people the least is say, well, then all three things could equal 0. I could say 2 equals 0. That's not a true statement, so I just cancel that out. I have 5x plus 1 could equal 0, which is a possibility, and x would equal negative 1 fifth. And then I have 5x plus 1 equals 0. And again, I have x equals negative 1 fifth. When an answer repeats itself, they call this a double root. Single solution, but double root. So the issue with this problem is it's difficult because there's a lot to do before we set aside equal to zero, namely multiply all this stuff out and combine like terms. So I've got x squared plus 4x minus x minus 4 equals, writing this out twice I'd have to foil it, so that's 4x squared plus 2x, plus 2x, plus 1, minus 7. Clean this up. x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals 4x squared plus 4x minus 6. Set aside equal to 0. I'm going to move all this over because I want my leading coefficient to be positive. So I have 0 is 3x squared plus x minus 2. That's going to involve an x method. So that's negative 6, positive 1. 3 and 2 will get that done with the 2 being negative. So now I have 0 equals 3x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 2 pull out a 3x, left with x plus 1, pull out a negative 2, left with an x plus 1, set equal to 0, GCF of x plus 1, leaving me with a 3x minus 2, and x plus 1 equals 0, and 3x minus 2 equals 0, therefore x equals negative 1 and x equals 2 thirds. So that's all there is to it. Again, step by step you guys should be okay with this.